Let's continue our discussion of statistical tests for two-way frequency tables. The last test we will discuss is McNamara's test for paired data. Our case illustration comes from a special article published in New England Journal of Medicine in April of 2010 about advanced directives and outcomes of surrogate decision making before death. This article is based on data from survey proxies in the Health and Retirement Study involving adults 60 years of age or older who had died between 2000 and 2006. The goal was to determine the prevalence of the need for decision-making and lost decision-making capacity and to test the association between preferences documented in advanced directives and outcomes of surrogate decision-making. The data we would like to examine involves 435 incapacitated subjects who had prepared living wills and who had expressed a preference for or against all care possible. The question is whether there is evidence to suggest that the actual care received by subjects did not match their stated preference. For each of the 435 subjects, two dichotomous variables have been recorded. The first is whether the subject preferred all care possible or not, and the second is whether the subject actually received all care possible or not. The data is summarized in the table shown. We can see that a total of 10 patients stated a preference for all care possible. Of those 10 patients, 5 or 50 percent actually received all care possible and the remaining 5 did not. A total of 425 patients stated a preference against all care possible. Of those 425, 395 did not receive all care possible, and the remaining 30, or 7.1 percent, did receive all care possible in opposition to their stated preference. While this table appears to be similar to those we have shown previously, the paired nature of these variables induces a different structure than in the previous case illustrations. As a result, use of the chi-square test of homogeneity or Fisher's exact test on this data will yield an incorrect p-value that doesn't address the hypothesis of interest. If our goal is to measure evidence of a discrepancy between what was preferred and what was received, then it's important to realize that subjects who receive the care that they preferred do not provide evidence of a discrepancy. The evidence for a discrepancy comes only from subjects who did not receive their stated preference. Thus, the cells in the table that we need to focus on are the five subjects who preferred all care possible but did not receive it, and the 30 subjects who received all care possible but did not state a preference for that care. If there is no structural discrepancy present in the data, then discrepancies would occur only due to random chance. If this were true, we would expect that there would be an equal number of subjects who preferred all care but did not receive it, and did not prefer all care but did receive it. In other words, misclassifications between preference and care receive should occur with equal frequency if they occur randomly. So, we have two categories of patients, observe cell frequencies for each, and we know that the expected frequency of the two cells should be equal. This table and structure should look familiar. This is a one-way frequency table that can be analyzed using a chi-square goodness of fit test, which we discussed in the first section of this module. The appropriate null hypothesis is that there is no discrepancy between stated preference and actual care received. More specifically, thinking in terms of goodness of fit, we assume that the observed data are sampled from a population with equal expected frequencies for each category. Given that there are 35 subjects, expected cell counts under the null would be 17.5 subjects per cell. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a discrepancy between stated preference, preference and actual care received. In terms of goodness of fit, 
This means that the observed data are sampled from a population with different expected frequencies than those assumed under the null. The p-value generated by the chi-square goodness of fit test in this example is less than 0.0001. Since the p-value is less than or equal to 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our result is statistically significant. From a statistical perspective, we conclude that there is evidence of a discrepancy between stated preference and actual care received. There are a variety of effect measures listed here that can be presented to help make a meaningful clinical interpretation of the results. A few comments about this test. As calculated here, the test is subject to the same constraints as were discussed for the chi-square goodness of fit test. The test is based on approximations that are generally accurate as long as the expected value in each category is greater than or equal to 5. McNamara's is appropriate when dealing with paired data as in this example, one-to-one -one match data as in a case control study, or pre-post designs where multiple measurements are made on the same subjects over time. This concludes our discussion of two-way frequency tables.